Many thanks, Millicent. Africa's highest ranked player in the world, Aaron Okodri, has said that he will not be focusing only on Egypt's Omar Assar when the 2017 IWTF Africa Cup serves off in Morocco on Saturday. Kodri, who has been listed among the foreign legion competing at the Maiden Ultimate Championships in India, believes he has more competitors than Assar to battle against in the Africa Cup. He claimed his first continental title in 2009 to make his debut at the IWTF World Cup in Moscow, Russia. A 2017 African Junior Athletics Championship is set to begin in Algeria without current champions Nigeria. This is the first time since 2009 that Nigeria is not sending a team to the championships after topping the medals table at the last edition in Ethiopia, winning a total of 27 medals. Reports say the delay in the inauguration of the new board of the Athletics Federation of Nigeria has hampered the activities of the body. Nigeria is also in danger of missing the IAAF World Under-18 Championships built to hold in Nairobi, Kenya on July the 12th. The football world champions Germany will face South American champions Chile in the final of the FIFA Confederations Cup currently going on in Russia. The Germans thrashed L3 of Mexico 4-1 in the semi-final with goals from Leon Goretzka, Timo Werner and Amin Yunes. The final comes up on Sunday, July the 2nd at the St. Petersburg Stadium. A Portugal skipper Cristiano Ronaldo will miss the FIFA Confederations Cup third place playoff this weekend as he will finally meet with his uh, newborn twins who are boys. Hours after the defeat to Chile in the penalty shootout in Kazan, the Real Madrid forward said he had been given permission to opt out of the playoff match in Moscow to meet his new arrivals. The 32-year-old Ronaldo is believed to have fathered the twins with a surrogate mother in the United States and already has a seven-year-old son, Cristiano Ronaldo Jr., from a previous relationship. The New York Knicks has agreed to part company with team president Phil Jackson after three years. Now, the move comes less than a week after Jackson led the Knicks through the NBA draft and on the eve of free agency that opens on Saturday. Jackson was a Hall of Fame coach with the Chicago Bulls and LA Lakers, delivering titles with some of the game's biggest stars like Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. The winner of an NBA record 11 championships as coach couldn't engineer one playoff berth while running the Knicks. And world number four, Novak Djokovic has defeated Donald Young 6-2-7-6 to reach the semifinals at Eastbourne. Djokovic took the first set in under half an hour in between the first and second set. Young received treatment on what looked like a lower back issue. However, it didn't seem to impact him too badly as he broke Djokovic in the ninth game of the second set with his backhand in particular causing his opponent problems. The time break in the second set was fiercely contested, but in the end, Djokovic took it and advanced to the next round. And that's a wrap on Sports News. The News at 10 continues shortly. Iraqi security forces claim they have recaptured the area upon which the great mosque of al-Nuri once stood before it was ruined by the Islamic State militants. The mosque is a great symbol of importance to both the security forces and the militants because Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi made his only public appearance as IS leader three days after the jihadist group proclaimed the creation of a caliphate exactly three years ago. The militants are now set to be retreating across Iraq and neighboring Syria where you is back Kurdish and Arab fighters are laying siege to the city of Raqqa. European leaders are promising to work together to press their views on climate change and free trade when leaders around the world meet in Germany for the G20 meeting. French President Emmanuel Macron said he hoped the United States would turn to reason after announcing it would pull out of the Paris climate deal. German Chancellor Angela Merkel hosts the preparatory meeting of European leaders for the upcoming G20 summit in Hamburg next month. French President Emmanuel Macron, British Prime Minister Theresa May and the heads of government from Italy, Spain, the Netherlands and Norway arrive in Berlin for the talks at the German capital's chancellery. 
Chancellor Merkel says in the aftermath of Britain's departure from the European Union and the U.S.'s withdrawal from the Paris Climate Pact, the bloc's remaining members must take greater responsibility for existential challenges the world faces. French President Emmanuel Macron and I have agreed a middle-term plan for deepening the European Union and the Eurozone in particular. It's very important to me that the framework for this deepening is right. This means that risks, liabilities and possibilities to decide should continue to remain in one field. Merkel says tackling climate change will also be one of the central tasks of the upcoming Hamburg summit of the world's largest economies, adding that the EU needed to take on more responsibility for tackling security concerns it faced, including a threat from terrorism. The European leaders say they would work together to convince the U.S. of their views on climate change and free trade at the summit next week and make it clear that the United States president would not be secluded in discussions. And the main news again. The federal government today launched the Voluntary Assets Declaration Scheme aimed at increasing government income through tax revenue. About 4 million Nigerians are targeted in this expanded program. Also today, the National Economic Council met at the presidential villa and agreed that the time had come for the federal government to collaborate in the construction of modern prison facilities for prisoners across the country. And that's news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.